Hey folks and welcome to TK Power Sports. This is the Can-Am Defender and usually when we get units to test it's only for a week maybe two. Well in this case we've had this thing for three months so we've done a ton of different things with it, run it in the mud, taken it for fun trail rides and gotten a lot of work done. So in this video I'm going to summarize all of our thoughts after three months of using this thing and almost all of them are good although we did have one big issue so stay tuned and I'll tell you all about it. Right off the top, let me tell you, we did a full comparison video with this Can-Am and a Kubota side-by-side. -side. So if you really want some of our more detailed thoughts in the moment while we were out there working, go check out that video. But for now, let me again just deliver you all my overall thoughts. And the first one is that for a utility side-by-side, -side, this machine has no business being this fun. The amount of suspension travel that we're getting these days on utility machines is really quite impressive. So yeah, we did work this thing, but a lot of the times we just went out cruising on the trails for fun ride. We ran it through the hydro line, ran the left hook, sank it in the mud. And in every case, I just found myself with a huge grin on my face. I was absolutely enjoying it. Not to mention, this is the upgraded power plant. So you are getting more horsepower here, which is always appreciated. And everything in this thing is dead simple to use from behind that wheel everything's on switches four-wheel drive the locker so yeah i just found myself kind of always looking at it going this is the kind of machine you could legitimately own for fun trail riding you're not going to be disappointed by the experience and the accessories we have on this unit because it is very accessorized only added to that fun element having a roof up top having a front windshield having these big doors just means you're keeping the elements off of yourself and that equals a more fun trail ride now i will say this is the power tip out windshield I don't think it's really worth it to go for the power. Just get the manual. This seems unnecessarily complicated. And then the roof up there, that's actually the Can-Am audio roof. And I will tell you, I do like having my music when I'm out working, but this roof specifically is nearly a $5,000 option here in Canada. Yeah, that is not worth it. I wouldn't pay that money just to have my music out on the trails. But yes, point number one is very simply, this is a really fun machine. If all you want to do is hit the trails for a good time. Now let's flip over to the work side of things. So first of all, the interior. I really do think Can-Am maximizes their space quite well. There's storage all over the place, lower storage bins, upper storage bins. There's that sort of upper glove box storage bin that's fully removable. So yes, as utility goes, I think they absolutely nail it. Now another one of the accessories here, which I absolutely would purchase every time, is that headache rack up there, this metal rack up here. Not only does it make sure that your cargo is never gonna come through that back windshield and you know do some damage to you or your machine, but you can just attach all kinds of things to it. We even just found ourselves bungeeing things to it. You can use those are tool holders up there. So if you did have a shovel, an axe, a shotgun, anything like that, you can strap it up there. Yeah, so many different uses for that headache rack. So that is one of these accessories that I would absolutely recommend if you're looking to do hard work with this machine. Now, when I say hard work, I'll show you. We had a real job to do up here at our cottage. It's our seasonal property, and we bought quite a few tons of rock to bring down to our beach to rebuild the rock wall on our beach. So this bed was consistently overloaded with those rocks. I would honestly say that it probably had up to 1,200, maybe 1,500 pounds in it sometimes because those rocks were quite heavy. So the positives there were the bed is quite large. It's not, you know, the largest bed you can get on a side-by-side, -side, but for doing those loads, we felt like it was decent. And then you can kind of see the after action report. We did put down a plastic sheet on the bottom to protect it, but the walls were fully unprotected. And yeah, they look a little bit worse for wear, but they're not even really gouged. They're mostly just scratch, like surface scratches. And that is the positive of having these plastic beds. You're not worrying about, you know, exposing raw steel and then having that rust. So the fact that the bed looks like it does, 
I think is totally fine. And, and then if you did do a lot of damage here, it'd be easy to just replace the entire bed. So as the bed goes, yeah, I can't complain about anything. It worked really, really well. And then power wise for moving the load, that was no issue. And more important than power though for us was sort of the engine braking and the brakes themselves. Cause we had to bring those rocks down a long hill, which is our driveway. And the engine braking is quite good. Put this thing in low range, take your foot off, and even with all that weight in it, it would just creep down the hill at around five kilometers an hour or less. So I really did appreciate the control it offered. And then maneuverability as well. Put it in two wheel drive, essentially is turf mode, so only one wheel is getting power, and we could swing really tight turns, and we were working in really tight areas. So I love how maneuverable this thing was as well. So for doing that entire job, this Can-Am worked perfectly, and like I said, we were overloading it that entire time, and you could tell the weight was there, but it did the job over and over and over, and you can see the result here. We moved a lot of rocks. So yes, the fun factor is great, and the work factor is really quite good as well. So for my impressions on this machine, when it's working perfectly, well, you've heard them all now, and the video could end here, but actually right at the end of our test, we did have a uh, pretty major mechanical flaw. So I mentioned we brought all those rocks down to the beach. On the last day we were doing it, we must have done you know 20 loads probably. And as the day was progressing, we were noticing some weird things happening in the inside of the Defender. So the lighting behind the screen would come on and go off. And then we got a fuel sensor fault and then the fuel gauge went all wonky on us and was reading different percentages. And then just idling, you could just hear it wasn't running right. It felt like it was running weak. And then dad even mentioned once or twice when he shut it off and then turned it back on, it was really weak on startup. So we knew something was going on. Luckily we got the job done. This was just good timing. And then the very next ride after the job was done, we went out and click, it was stone cold dead. The machine would not move whatsoever. So right away we figured, well, it's gotta be the battery, right? There's obviously some kind of electrical issue here. So we boosted it off of a Chevy Silverado. It started right up and ran perfectly. You could hear it was running better. So right away we said, oh, okay, that's good news. The second we unhooked those cable leads, it died because it needed the power from the Chevy because the battery in here is stone cold dead. So this led us to believe it's probably an alternator issue. The alternator, for whatever reason, stopped delivering power to the battery. So we ran the battery entirely flat and then it couldn't run on its own after that. So of course I did what most of us do these days. I ran to Google, I threw it in there and I see a bunch of other Defender owners that have had alternator and battery problems. So I can't necessarily say it's a systemic issue but it does seem like something that does happen with these defenders and you know what it's unfortunate because as I mentioned everything before that point was going great and I was feeling great about this machine but it is essentially a brand new defender so yeah it really is too bad um, to get it up the hill we had to pull it up with the truck and then to get it on the trailer we hooked up another battery which didn't have enough juice to start it sadly but it had just enough juice so we could use the winch and we winched it up here onto the trailer and yeah right now if I got in to start it it would not start it is absolutely dead so yeah, that brings our three months to a, a sad conclusion because right up until the end, everything was going great. But uh, yeah, she's dead. And now we're gonna take it back to the dealership and uh, we'll see what they have to say. Maybe they can give us an explanation as to what exactly went wrong in this machine. And if we get that explanation, I'll throw it up for you right here. Well, folks, that brings us to the end of this one. So first of all, it was nice of Can-Am to let us take this unit for multiple months because this is much more like a true ownership test. When you only have things for a short period of time, I can only really show you how it works when it is operating correctly. And our three month test showed me that the Defender here is really fun. It's a great workhorse when it's running and that's such an unfortunate end to the test but yes once reliability in a machine lets you down the other stuff kind of doesn't matter anymore but yeah that's it for this one now i need to hear from you first of all do you own a defender have you had any of these issues please chime in in the comments we always like to get as much information together down there in the comments as we can so hopefully we can help some other future owners and then while you're down there in the comments don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to TK Power Sports and see what we're testing next. See ya.